hundred percent sure what the predictions are, whether they're accurate or not. It's essential to uh, focus more and more on the protection of ecosystem processes. Ecosystem processes which provide extremely valuable economic services, which to this day, unfortunately, are much uh, not only undervalued, but not even recognized, like flood water control, etc. Just uh, leave that on there and just move ahead to the next slide. Yeah, those are some principles that are found in literature and a massage with some kind of semblance of sense. And there's also the second category of specific concrete actions that can be and should, consider, should be considered for being undertaken right now already in order to be proactive. So there should be a, a definition of it, an appraisal of the situation right now. Where are the sensitive biomes? Where are the sensitive areas? Undertake national level assessments of the sensitivity and vulnerability of individual protected areas to climate change right now. Adjust system planning of uh, the, the protected areas at the national level and on the basis of including these projections and adaptation into the future. Because protected areas are dynamic, they're not static, that's one thing that ecology has taught us. What we see today isn't what we're going to see tomorrow. And protected areas cannot remain as static as uh, they have been in terms of a construct. Uh, so that it has, they have to be opened up. They have to become more conservation zones, involve a greater range of partners, become more innovative in terms of attracting different kinds of financing mechanisms, uh, greater self-financing, etc. So this is very exciting and a very challenging time for protected areas. And again, as uh, Andy and Harry mentioned, there's some things that individual protected areas can do themselves, clearly. I mean, they should be setting the, the, the lead, uh, indicating that they are committed to uh, reducing their own carbon footprint, for example, as an example of mitigation. So, on the basis of what I just quickly tried to summarize, uh, what are the things that we really have to be concerned about? And looking ahead, and we should focus and focus on and push. I think, like I mentioned before, the perception of what a protected area is has to be really revisited and inevitably transformed. They're not as static again as they were 100 years ago, set aside to protect uh, you know, a particular species or. Uh, the hot springs, because it is very nice to go out there on a Sunday afternoon and enjoy the wild mountains and uh, sit in a thermal bath. Times have changed. The last hundred years, as we all know, unfortunately, have been disastrous for the natural environment. And the prognosis for the future looks a little threatening. So, and protect areas have a fundamental role to play in securing a more sustainable future. Like I said, they're not luxuries that we cannot afford. <clears throat> How often do we hear, well, well, that's, that's a protected area. What does it do for us? They're all money losing for the most part around the world. Why should we invest in them? Invest in them. It's not a sound economic decision. Well, that is very short-sighted. I'm sorry. If we're talking about the future. We're not talking about two years or four years or ten years. We're talking about sustainability, which is a long-term horizon. And protected areas have a fundamental role to ensure and secure that kind of a future. They are the basic insurance. There is nothing more basic. We buy life insurance, we buy health insurance, we buy automobile insurance, house insurance, and no one complains. Well, what do we get out of it? We're just money wasted. That's a, the perception of protected areas has to change. That's one example. If they do provide values, it's never a waste of money because they conserve fundamental ecosystem services and they secure the future. And to sum up, planning and management of particular areas therefore must change in terms of time horizons, in terms of scale, it has to become much enlarged, it has to be regional, 
by a regional, and objectives of management have to be revisited again. We're not managing in a static world. It's very, it's changing very quickly. And we have to be with the curve, if not ahead of the curve or the wave. If we look back since the dawn of time, and we look at the natural world around us, we can clearly agree that nature has paid a very high price for our lifestyles, for what we enjoy doing, where we live, how we travel, what we eat. But, and we have not paid our bills. We have not paid our bills. We've been freeloading, we've been parasites on nature. And it, now nature can no longer afford to pay our bills indefinitely into the future. And we must contribute towards the payments if we really are serious about a more sustainable future. So investing in nature's continued support, it's only natural. We all want to survive. We all want a certain standard of living, a certain lifestyle. So it's only natural to actually invest in the maintenance of this natural infrastructure which supports us. Thank you. Grazie. 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 Grazie.